Welcome to the Corona Chronicles. This time I'm looking at the last dance. You know, the docuseries The Last Dance has been in the works since 2016 when LeBron James brought a championship to Cleveland and started to say... That one right there made me the greatest player of all time. For That's so many I felt. reasons. Right? So, at that point, apparently, Michael Jordan said all that unseen footage that was recorded in the Last Dance season of 97-98, last season at the Chicago Bulls, last championship, I want to use that and make something out of it. There you go. <laughs> so this docu-series, The Last Dance, is essentially an on-screen version of uh, the book Playing for Keeps by David Havelstam, which was actually written in the time of the 97-98 final season. And it was telling the whole story of Michael Jordan. You know, you want to tell the story of the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan in its entirety to re-cement or reaffirm the legacy of Jordan as the greatest player of all time then there's a few points that are missing that I feel do a disservice to your case. The second episode. He goes crazy. He scores 63. That's the highest recorded amount of points in any playoff game to this day. That record has is undefeated to this day, right? But... What the documentary doesn't illustrate enough is that particular team. That 1986 Celtics team was the best of the 80s, better than any of the earlier incarnations of that, you know, of the Celtics teams was the 86 team. But when I saw the little touch pass, Mikhail, Bird, Paris, the genius, that team's ball distribution, the movement of the ball, the passing, bird it can't be as surely as there is a passer there must also be a receiver and there must be the anticipation the readiness of knowing to expect the unexpected scoring 63 points in a playoff game no one's defeated that record by Michael Jordan but further demonstrating who he scored those 63 against that particular incarnation of the Celtics the symmetric nucleus of how they brought it all together. You know, every player knows his role to perfection. I, I believe that, uh, I, I feel they should have really demonstrated who the hell he scored 63 against to really make the point of this guy, Michael Jordan at that point, even in 86 was something, you know, Never been seen before. Jordan with great anticipation. He's off to the race. Watch this. So, you know, the Bulls were getting swept in the first round of the playoffs in 86. What, summer of 86, Jerry Krause, the general manager, puts in Doug Collins as coach. That was, uh, get the ball, Michael. Everybody get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> in Doug Collins' tenure from 86 to 89, he takes them from a team that are being swept in the first round of the playoffs to conference finals the inbounds pass comes into jordan here's michael at the foul line a shot on Eagle. Good! The Bulls win! They win! his tenure was brief but it was it was important you want to solidify jordan as the greatest player of all time lebron's edging him in terms of he averages a few more career-wise he averages a few more rebounds and assists than jordan but jordan if i'm not mistaken is the only player that won defensive player of the year and a scoring title in the same season. So when you had Doug, you had Doug Collins saying, When I was coaching him, he was the MVP of the league. He was the MVP of the All-Star game. Michael Jordan. He won the slam dunk competition. And he was a defensive player of the year. Up court pass stolen by Jordan. Michael Jordan takes it coast to coast. That's Greatness. He fails to mention the fact that not only did he get MVP and Defensive Player of the Year in the same season, he got a scoring title. So if you want to talk about the ultimate two-way player, 
He's winning a Defensive Player of the Year and a scoring title. As in, he scored the most points of any player in the league in that year. 87-88, I do not know why, for the life of me, they didn't put in the fact that he won a scoring title on top of that. I don't know if that was attributed to bad editing or what. Don't neglect that point and then say, oh, and then try and, you know, push the notion that Jordan was the best of all time. But on the Doug, Doug Collins thing, look, I knew they were going to put the, the clip of him kissing Jordan. I kissed him on the cheek. I said, I love him. He loves me. Would you come here a second so we can kiss on TV here, please? There we go. <laughs> would you, would you, would you, like, would you tell him everything is fine? Oh. Okay, we've kissed and made up. <laughs> just for the dopamine spike of it, you know, just for the little dopamine. Oh, look, 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 they were pally. They were best friends. Uh, Doug Collins was too close to Michael Jordan. Phil Jackson was more this Zen spiritual keep you at an arm's length, not too emotionally invested, gets the job done type. Thing with Doug Collins, you're just insinuating that he was too much, he was trying to be one of the boys and he wasn't emotionally detached enough to be an effective coach. What you fail to mention is Doug Collins' backstory. You see, the thing with Doug is, Doug's actually a good guy. You know, Doug played on the Sixers with Dr. J and those guys in late 70s, early 80s. Collins, good catch. Colin. You see the Sixers, they were a rising team that was struggling to win a title. They didn't get a title. They had been on the ascent since the late 70s until 83, the Sixers didn't win a title. Doug Collins got injured and his career was ended prematurely. He never won a championship with that team. And thus, when he met Jordan, yeah, he was probably living a bit too vicariously through Michael at the time. Yeah, he was trying to gain ground for, for lost ground in terms of his playing playing career he wasn't just some gap filler some little interim coach from when Jordan got there to when they put Jackson in Doug Collins was a good motherfucking dude and they should have put a couple more minutes on the docuseries about Collins because he wasn't just some interim guy some little interim coach from the time Jordan got there to when they put Phil Jackson in he put his blood sweat and tears into that team into that role into that position he had his career ended abruptly twice not one time, twice. He was doing a good job. The difference is maybe, maybe uh, Jerry Krause, the general manager, was Machiavelli enough to say, look, Doug Collins has done a good job, but good isn't good enough. We want great. He sees I'm out to fire. Doug Collins is like, it's gonna be some fucking balls. Fire guy that just took us to the Eastern Conference Final. The simple fact that he put his 110%, he put his all into that job. Put a bit more of the backstory in. Explain maybe why he was that way. So that's it for now. These videos are still in their infancy. I'm not where I want to be in terms of video production, but it's on the rise. So stay tuned. Everybody get the fuck out of the way. <laughs>